will always result in Jerusalem being part of Israel's capital. The Knesset is there, the Supreme Court of Canada, so we might as well say that outright. That does not preclude the fact that East Jerusalem could also one day be the, uh, be the center or capital of some eventual Palestinian state within a two-state solution. But to suggest that at present Jerusalem is not the capital of, of Israel kind of conflicts with common sense, uh, the, the reality of the situation, where the talks were in the Oslo Accords. So we came out with that clearly. Decisions on timelines with respect to the embassy and, and, and things like that are totally different. Canada has no consular presence in, uh, in Jerusalem, unlike many of our uh, allies that in some cases have consular presence in both, both parts of the city. So that's, that was our position. We think it's very straightforward and it supports ultimate goal of a two-state solution. So should it be moved, the embassy? Like no, what, what I said to, uh, at Manning is I do think Canada... Right now we have a representative office in Ramallah for the Palestinian Authority and we have an embassy in Tel Aviv. I think there should be some consular presence in Jerusalem because when we have Canadians traveling abroad to Israel, most of them go to Jerusalem. So we should have some sort of consular presence and a decision about an embassy is, is a, a separate discussion entirely. And we'll also see what the United States does, their timelines, we're now hearing it might be May or June. Uh, we'll see what other countries do, but there's 10 of our close friends and allies that have consular presence in the city. So I think our, our position is a balanced approach. It recognizes the reality, reality today, and it doesn't preclude uh, challenges for a two-state solution. Is it balanced you, you for the Palestinians, consultations. Who should you consult on this? Uh, widely, actually. I spoke with uh, both sides of the equation. And, and look, th there is a desire from some of the... Uh, uh, folks from uh, the Palestinian community uh, for them to see one day uh, a presence or of a capital in East Jerusalem. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't preclude that. So recognizing the fact that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel does not prevent discussions down the road for a two-state solution. I think the challenge is right now is the Palestinian Authority needs to make sure that when they're negotiating, they have the ability to... to um, deliver security in the areas they're already responsible for. That's currently a challenge. I think countries like Canada can do a lot to help with institution building. We've done that uh, in terms of justice and access to justice in, uh, with the Palestinian Authority. So that can be our role. But to, to not state the obvious, I think, does a disservice to the issue. It well, seems that the, the petition and the, the, the statement by the leader um, was only on your English website, not on your French website. Why is that? Um, I can look into that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Obviously, uh, we were focusing on another country that begins with I today, India, not Israel, but we've talked extensively But I mean, was it on people. purpose to say this in English and not in French? I don't think so. I think okay. uh, I can look into that and answer the question. Any with questions on India? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is this claim about the National Security Advisor going to damage relations with India? Well, we think the Prime Minister should should come out and either confirm that his office made the National Security Advisor available to certain media outlets. Uh, Canadian Press is reporting that. There's been other journalists. Uh, Brian Lilly reported that yesterday. That was very troubling because that senior civil servant is a specialized advisor to the Prime Minister and to Cabinet on national security to use that person as part of the Prime Minister's office media team. I think was highly inappropriate. It's a disrespect to that civil servant, and it potentially poisons a relationship with India, which is already frayed after a terrible, terrible week. The Prime Minister needs to start taking responsibility for his actions and the actions of his office. It's never his fault, whether it's the private islands, whether it's ethics violations, whether it's this trip, it's someone else's fault. Well, Prime Minister, you're the leader, you have an office, you're responsible. I think what they did to the National Security Advisor is terrible. Are you surprised that no one seems to be, uh, other than the what appeared to be an apology from uh, Randeep Sarai, no one, no heads seem to be rolling over this, no one's been fired, no one seems to be punished. Does that, does that need to happen? Well, we, we, said, we, we, we said in the House today, the Prime Minister never takes responsibility. First, it was the High Commissioner in India. It was their mistake. Then it was a Liberal MP in his caucus. But where would that MP have sent the name? It would have been sent to the Prime Minister's office. Then they proposed this ridiculous notion that a Canadian invited by his own caucus was somehow a plant or part of a conspiracy by the Indian government. It's almost farcical. 
But the fact is, we asked several times today, point blank, did the Prime Minister's office provide the National Security Advisor to media to try and address problems with this trip? They would not answer that question. That, to me, confirms they did. It undermines the confidence Parliament now has in the National Security Advisor, because that's not his role. I've sat in Cabinet. I know the role of that important figure. Um, it was disrespectful to our civil service. And it's politicizing a role that should be beyond politics. Just going back to the, uh, the Canadian Embassy in Jerusalem, will you, you said there's no determination yet uh, that has been made. Will you be coming up with a determination before the election? Will it be part of the platform? Well, we're still, we're still doing consultations, but as, as I said, we made the clear distinction with respect, there's two issues here. The first is, is Jerusalem the capital? We, we believe it's the functioning capital now of Israel, so by not recognizing that, we're, we're, we're doing a disservice to the second issue, which is down the road a two-state solution and, and when is the appropriate time for, for an embassy to move to Jerusalem. That's a second uh, question entirely. We're still consulting on the second part of that question. In fact, I've got a meeting later today uh, or later this week with, uh, with a number of Palestinian Canadians who want to get clarity on our position and put, give me more input. We're continuing to reach out, but we, we made the decision, the leader, myself and, and the people of the Conservative Caucus, that, that you can recognize the reality today that Jerusalem is the functioning capital of Israel, while also being supportive of a two-state solution. And that, that is a wider conversation that we can divorce from the... But you're, 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 adding, you're adding that word functional. I don't quite understand, because you are recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. That's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. And then if you're elected in 2019, Canada will recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Right? Well, right I, now, I don't understand that, I think that this, functional word that you're well, right now, adding. Well, recognizes that we're not the government now, right? We're, right, the, we're yeah. the opposition. Yeah. But we're recognizing that right now it is functioning as the capital. Uh, certainly Israel considers Jerusalem their capital, their, their parliament is there, their Supreme Court, their foreign affairs, most of their structure, um, and any two-state solution will not change that. So we feel recognizing that is recognition that it's serving as a capital now and will be a capital so in the future. So should the Canadian government recognize Jerusalem as the capital now? We believe so, yes.